So I want to teach this morning very much as a follow-up to what our sister just talked to us about. You and fruit bearing. That's what I want to talk about. You and fruit bearing. You know, interestingly, uh, Wheaton Christian Center got started when I heard a message on how faith works. Brother Fred Price, uh, I, I got a tape and I listened to him and I said, uh, I always knew that that's how faith works. But this brother says it. And I was changed from that. I've never been the same preacher that I was, although I always preach Christ and him crucified. But the, the idea of faith came. And he, his, uh, like the mainstay of his uh, faith teaching that lit me up was in Mark 11, at, uh, at 23, 24, he says, have faith in God, and, uh, and so on. And then, verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, and, and I got hold of it, as that brother is under some. But in Mark 11, it's interesting how Jesus conveyed the teaching about faith that works by our speaking it and that when we pray we should believe when we pray right then and uh, it will come into fruition in our lives what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive that glorious teaching came as Jesus really was endeavoring to teach us all, to teach his followers and to teach the church and to teach all who would believe on him about fruit bearing. Because what occasioned the teaching was that the Savior Christ came to this fig tree looking for fruit. And when he was disappointed that there was no fruit, he cursed the fig tree. No man eat fruit of you henceforward forever. And the word of God says that the fig tree immediately withered away. The disciples came the next morning and it was obvious. And his, Brother Peter said, the tree that you cursed is withered. And Jesus took that occasion to say, let me tell you all what happened. Why that fig tree died. So, it was about fruit bearing. He expected fruit that wasn't there. And that is the real message that the Son of God wants to bring to us in our walk with God, in our uh, walking out our faith. That there must be productivity. It must produce. And uh, I want to take you now to the 15th chapter of the book of John. Really serious chapter. Where Jesus tells us all about what he is about in relationship to us. And uh, what we should glean as we look to him. And as we understand him. And uh, we understand Almighty God the Father by taking a good look at Jesus. Do you want to know what God is like? Take a good look at Jesus. Jesus said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. I and the Father are one that is one and the same. So his objective really is to have us understand how the eternal God relates to us. That's what Jesus is all about. He's, his whole purpose of coming down here is that he might bring us and hand us over to his Father. That he might bring us to God. That's what Jesus 
is all about. And in bringing us to God, he wants us that when we appear before Almighty God, that we have some things that we have produced in our lives. So he tells us that that's what his father is looking for. What Almighty God is looking for is that you and I will present him some fruit produced from our lives. That's what Almighty God will be looking for and every individual will be judged on what has your productivity been like in this life. Jesus said, I am the true vine. In other words, I am the, I'm the, the tree, the real tree that produces. My father is the husband man. In other words, my father, he owns the estate on which the fruit bearing tree grows. It's, um, I am growing out of my father, so to speak. I am the true vine, my father is the husband man. Every branch in me, are you in him? Every branch in me. God regards us based on our relationship to his son. The reason I am pretty intense about Jesus Christ and that we are preparing people for the Lord's soon return the reason is that we are supposed to be producing based on our relationship to Jesus the Son of God and as a consequence of that relationship we should be productive he says my father is looking for productivity my father is looking for fruit bearing on those who are united to his son i am the true vine i'm the main fruit bearing tree i'm i'm the trunk that goes down into the earth and is rooted in the earth and draws a substance that causes fruit to come on the branches. My father is checking that out. Every branch in me that bears fruit, he prunes it. He purges it. That it may bring forth more fruit more fruit more fruit and every branch that doesn't bear fruit he takes away God will not settle for unproductivity now say fruit what are you talking about well there are two kinds of fruit you could see them in Galatians 5 uh, one very important fruit that God expects you and me to bear for him. Why? Because he got us started by causing newness of life through the activity of the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit that brought you and me to Jesus. We are born of the Spirit. Are you listening to me? Yes. That's if you were not born, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you weren't born of the Spirit, you don't belong to Jesus. You are not God's redeemed child 
born again child because unless you're born of the spirit the Holy Spirit of the living God visits you and puts in you the fact, the knowledge of his coming to indwell you and in that act you're born again. You're born of the Spirit. And that's why if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Almighty God coming into us is what makes it so that we become productive first of the fruit of the Spirit. That's what he's looking for primarily in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit. Uh, there's another kind of fruit and of course that is the fruit of our witness, the fruit of our evangelism. The fruit of souls that we bring into the kingdom, enlarging the kingdom of God in the earth. Souls, that's another kind of fruit. But I believe that God is even more interested in the fruit of the Spirit that he has here in Galatians 5. It says, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Peace, long suffering. At, at, at verse 22, what did I say? First, first, at verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. God's checking out our heart's attitude if it is a heart motivated by love and joy. Hey, God doesn't like gloominess in his people. God loves when his people are experiencing the joy of the Lord. You're as strong as you're joyous in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. Hey, in this life, all of us need long suffering. That is the ability to stay sweet when you suffer long. That's long suffering. And, and, and God is interested in what has the influence of the Holy Spirit been on your life. That's why he is looking for fruit. If, if, if he's looking for joy and, and you are showing disgruntled, uh, uh, disgruntled attitude or you are miserable or you are, you know, uh, anything but joyous in what you're delivering, you're not producing what Almighty God is looking for because God's Holy Spirit should influence the totality of our lives. Amen. So, he's looking for joy, peace. Are you at peace? Do you know Jesus? Uh, you know, when he showed up, the angels of God themselves shouted it from the heavens. Peace, peace, on earth. Jesus our Lord says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Look, anything but peacefulness and peaceableness and, uh, and, and your own uh, repose in the Lord is contrary to what God's looking for to those who know his son in saving experience. He's called the Prince of Peace. Yes. Amen. Amen. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Hey, you have it? You have that thing that, that the devil from hell himself can't shake. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, the, the tests of life and the trials of life come upon us and, and we are momentarily looking for it. But soon the Spirit of God reminds you that he is, he is influencing you. Peace. Jesus said, I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Let the storms howl around us. The peace that nothing 
can destroy. On and on he goes. Tells us what the fruit of the Spirit are. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, gentleness. Don't get all bent out of shape and get mean and uh, God help us. When, when you're a person such as I, I, I tend to be a little intense, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, if there's one person that will bring it out of you, it's your wife. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and you got to remain with the fruit of gentleness. So you all pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> gentleness. Glory be to God. Yes, sir. And um, here they are. Goodness. That's godliness. Faith. Faith is the fruit of the Spirit. If it seems as though it's not happening and you get all, you know, discouraged and downhearted, you're telling God you don't have any faith. I'm telling you the God that cannot fail is your God. The God that never fails. The God that knows how to be unmoved by anything that happens. Jesus slept in the midst of a howling storm when they thought they were all, the, 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 the seamen thought, this is it for us. Jesus was sleeping. Oh, my, 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 my. Fruit, this, this fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Jesus wasn't afraid because he had already settled it that there isn't anything the devil can throw at him to sink him. So, when the storm is falling, he said, let Satan carry on if it came from Satan. And he can, you know, Satan can send storms. Oh yeah. You're in the midst of a storm? It might be Satan. Yeah, oh Yes. Listen, he, I'm telling you, God controls when everything is said and done, everything. But that's not always easy to understand because the devil from hell can send storms. And Almighty God gives him, the devil, permission to be devilish. Yes. He said one day to God, uh, or rather, no, much to the contrary, God said to him, says, do you know a guy named Job? He said, yeah, 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 I know him. And I want to get to him. But you have a hedge around him. Remove the hedge and I'll get to him. And God said, all right, Satan, I give you permission to be devilish. Go do your thing. And he sent storms upon Job, killed off his children, ruined everything he had, reduced him from being one of the richest men on the earth to one of the poorest, and after that he afflicted him with some terrible diseases and so on. Oh yeah. God gave him permission to be devilish. God did. God said, go ahead and be devilish do some wickedness to Job God did hard to understand isn't it but you see God had confidence in Job he, he must have confidence in you because you are a person of faith and the storms don't get you all you know changed from being a, a nice sweet Christian a, a follower of Jesus to side with the enemy of Jesus. I, I, how is your fruit bearing? Yeah. Faith. Meekness. How blessed are the meek. They'll inherit the earth. Temperance. Temperance. You know what temperance is? Well, I tell you what. Pray for temperance. Temperance 
means self-control, not appetite controlled. Now how many people are in the grave because they never got attracted to this fruit of the spirit? It's all too sadly true. God, by the Holy Spirit, will drop temperance on you. Hey, there are some things I like so much that I have to cry out to God for temperance. Self-control. I'm telling you. I got to cry out to God for temperance that I'm not body ruled. You see me here? I, I had open heart surgery in three years ago, January coming. And uh, I lost weight. I was a skeleton when almost when I came out of the surgery. And I gained about six pounds from being a skeleton. And you know what? I got an appetite that you can hardly imagine. And I can't gain a pound. <laughs> it's not for practicing temperance. <laughs> I got to watch myself. Because I'd eat all day long. And uh, I look at someone very close to me. And it's obvious to everybody that is out of that, that, that person, that, that, that he is out of control. And the Lord tells me, don't you be critical. You are the same thing, only you can get away with it. Self-control, temperance, fruit of the spirit. Yes, 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 yes. How is our productivity? It's not a good sermon this morning, Pastor. You're messing all over us. <laughs> and uh, against such there is no law. You allow the Holy Spirit to dominate your life and reproduce Jesus in you. And just as there is no law that can condemn Jesus, the word of God said, against the fruit of the Spirit, there is no law. Stay close to the Holy Spirit. And I could tell you very quickly how to stay close to the Holy Spirit. Live in the word. Live by the word. Live on your knees. Live in prayer. Pray without ceasing. And be big on the word and obey whatever in God's word. You will profitably learn and you will be without any law to condemn you. God looks at you just as though you'd, you've never broken one of his laws. Now Jesus goes on and he tells us back in the 15th chapter of John every branch in me that bears fruit the father purges it, takes away that doesn't bear fruit, the father takes away and every branch that bears fruit he purges it takes care of it attends to the plant purges it uh, prunes it waters it, do whatever is necessary to let that plant be a thriving, growing, fruit-bearing plant. Every branch, every branch, that means every person that's living for Jesus has access to God's special care because God wants you to produce. He owns the whole farm. And he's after more fruit out of you. More fruit. 
more fruit. Don't ever get satisfied with your productivity. More fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's what Jesus says. Hey, it, it, it's, a, it's a sweet deliverance. It's a blessed place to live at. When you know in, an, in your own heart, God is not accusing me of anything. Much to the contrary. I am clean before Almighty God. Jesus says so. And he tells you, don't get away from it. Now are you clean? Through the word which I have spoken to, abide in me. Stay right there. Don't try to find why you are not clean. Jesus said you are clean. He knows why he says you are clean. Why? Because his blood has been applied to you. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But much more, Jesus has attested to the fact that his blood has made you whiter than snow. Jesus says, you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Has Jesus ever spoken a word to you that you know that Jesus spoke a word to you? That word had all the attributes of his character in it. No, you are clean. Don't question that. Stay right there. Abide in me, he says. You see, he knows us. He knows how prone we are to question what he says. But God's word is 100% sure. And if Jesus says you are clean, if Jesus spoke to you, hey, because he spoke to you, he cleaned you up. And I like to say so that the devil from hell doesn't have a magnifying glass big enough to find one speck of sin on me. You know, I, I, I have an interest in, in, in some things in scientific. I just how, that's how God wired me, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and I, I asked the, the computer one day, what, what's, the, what's the smallest particle known to science? And uh, at first, you know, the scientific minds used to think a grain of sand was the smallest thing. <laughs> they, they found out there are molecules that go together to make that sand. And then there are atoms. And they said the, the atom must be the smallest thing there is. And they probed further and they found that the atom is made out of electrons, protons, and neutrons. Smaller still. And they kept probing. And they found that they could break down the proton and the neutron. And there comes the smallest particle known to science. The smallest bit of matter out of which everything in the universe is made call a quark, Q-U-A-R-K. The devil doesn't have a magnifying glass big enough to find one quark of sin Amen. on Carlton because Jesus said, you are Mr. Clean. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't, you know, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He'll find any fault in you and call you the biggest sinner on the planet. Don't listen to him. Jesus said, no, I am telling you, you are clean through the word. One day Jesus spoke to me and he told me, do you want to be saved? That's why I died. So that anybody that wants to be saved 
may be saved as the biggest sinner on the planet. But that's what he told me. So I got his word. I know he told me because from that day, I've been pretty much the same as you see me right now, and I don't even want to tell you. I bow my head in abject shame about my past. You have no idea how hellish life had become because of my own pursuit of sin in this life. Hey, all have sinned. But woe to the man to whom the offense comes. You don't go looking for the devil because he'll oblige you. Okay? So I know what Jesus told me. You want to be saved. That's why I died. Glory be to God. So that anybody that wants to be saved may be saved. I found him whom my soul loveth. Are you listening to me out there? And what I didn't understand, it took time before, you know, the Holy Spirit can teach you what Jesus meant when he said he saves you. And it meant that he was telling me, I bring you under the blood the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us. Don't accuse yourself. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. Don't oblige him by living in self accusation. If any man sins, that is anyone who knows the Savior, we have an advocate, top flight attorney with the Father. And the Word of God says we are coming to Mount Zion. Hey, God sees you as already so fixed up that you are on the holy mountain where he has his throne. 12th chapter of Hebrews. We are coming to Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. God sees you as though you've already made it. Heard is well done come into the kingdom of your Lord. Come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. My, 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 my. Uh, that's what God fits you for. Stop calling yourself names. God says, you come to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. You're a good company for the angels. Glory be to God. God didn't say he's going to do that to you, for you. He said you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the You are ready from where God sits, you are in. From where God sits, I'm telling you, you are in. Get used to thinking like God thinks. Unto the city of the living, an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in him. All the saints of all ages perfected. Yeah. Glory to God. You are come unto the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are written in heaven. Everybody whose name is in heaven, you are among them. Your name is written there. Uh, I tell you what, not only is my name written on the book, in the book, the word of God tells me that my name is engraved on his hand. When God looks at his own hand, he says, oh, look at that, look at my son, Carlton. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes. And you are come to God himself. Read it in Hebrews 12. You think I'm telling you this or just to tell you? It says we are common among Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God. You have come to God. Are you listening to me? I, don't, I haven't picked up my verse yet. Uh, I was just quoting it because I know it. 
where, where, what, what verse am I at in Hebrews 12? Here we are, verse 23. To general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven, and to God. And to God. Hey, do you know where Jesus is? He went back into the bosom of the Father. He was reunited with the Father with the glory which I had with you before the world was. That's where he is. And he tells me that I'm right there. In the 14th chapter of John, it says that that day you shall know when the Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit can talk to you, you shall know that I am in my Father and you in me. Where is he? In my Father and you in me. He didn't go there without Carlton. Glory be to God. Are you hearing me? And I in you. We have come to God. Hey, we got something to live up to. Because you are come through the death of the Son of God, you are come to the eternal El Yon. The God, the great almighty God. Yeah, that's where you are. You are come to God. To the Lord God himself. Oh, hallelujah. May almighty God help us to live in the light of the fact. That through Jesus, we are united to the Holy God and to God. You come, read it in Hebrews 12. You come to God, the judge of all. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because Almighty God has already judged you. When you came to God, you came to the one who judged you and pronounced you not guilty, but righteous. Amen. To God the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous men, made perfect. Hallelujah to God. You're a good company for, this, for, for righteous men, made perfect. And to Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus is there. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. That's the one that says to the Father, you have bound yourself by signing your document with my blood as I died on that cross. The Jesus, the mediator, Jesus stands before the Father and says, not that one. No, my blood is upon that one and you, the eternal God, has made a covenant in my blood that whoever believes on me is free. Whom the Son makes free is free indeed to God the judge of all you've already been judged walk in your freedom God has declared you not guilty but righteous I will use the theologians use the word justify counted not guilty but righteous that's why God will do anything for you because you look the same to him as does Jesus. And it's only a question of time that you'll see yourself literally as he is. So are we in this world. But I wind this thing up, right? Because, hey, hey, when I get going and, and the Holy Ghost is all over me, I, I don't know how to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I can fully understand how Paul could have preached all night long. I wouldn't lie to you. I, I, can, I can feel it. I, can, I, can, I, can, I know what, what happened. He was teaching and preaching and he got in the spirit. And the next thing you know, it was late in the night. And, and, and the kid fell out the window. <laughs> and he had to go down and raise him from the dead. I can't promise you that. <laughs> So don't you fall out the window. Uh, are you in trouble? <laughs> yeah. It says, and you'll come to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, and to Jesus. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. The blood that cleanses from all sin that wiped out 
everything that speaks of sin, contrary to God, that's you. Don't you fight that. Don't let the devil make you question that. Just receive it. Just receive that. That's what it's all about. You want to be fruit bearing? Know who you are in Jesus. Stay right there with him. Says I've told you. Stay right there. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. No more can you unless you abide in me. How do you abide in him? You don't let his word get away from you. The word of God in you, that's God indwelling you. God, I said, indwelling you. That's Jesus, our Lord, indwelling you. That's the Holy Spirit of the living God indwelling you. Hang in there with him. Tell the devil, no, you don't tell me that. I don't believe you. I never will believe you. I believe what God says, and God says he's fixed me up just right. You've come to Jesus, the mediator, the one who pleads my case with Almighty God and backs the devil off when he stands before God to accuse me. He is the accuser of the brethren. If he tells you you are not good, if he tells you you are not right, if he tells you you are not righteous, if he tells you you are not holy unto the Lord, if he tells you that Jesus doesn't have anything to do with you, he is lying. Don't believe a liar. He doesn't know what else to do but lie. The Bible says whatever he speaks, he speaks a lie. So if he tells you anything contrary to the fact that you are just right with God and very capable of bearing fruit for the Lord, if he tells you anything, don't believe him. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, I like that it ends up that we've come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling. Lord of sprinkling. See, when Jesus went to the Father, he took his blood before him. And the Bible says that the blood is before God's throne. When God looks down, when God sits on his throne, he can't miss the blood because Jesus went and offered it up to him. Amen. It's for you. The blood of sprinkling that speaks better things. And Abel's blood. Abel's blood cried out to God from the ground. Avenge this murder. Avenge this murder. The blood of Jesus says, Let my brother, my sister, in to us. Let my brother, my sister, know eternal blessedness. Let my brother, my sister know that I have fixed them up so that they would bear fruit. Herein is my father glorified. Says that a little further in the 15th chapter. This is what glorifies God. Do you know why you are on the planet? You are on the planet to glorify God. That's why he made you wake up this morning. Because that's what you are about. See, you are to be a follower of Jesus. And every moment, every split second, a nanosecond, that's a thousandth of a second, they got the millionth of a second. I was reading, you got billionth of a second. A nanosecond is one billionth of a second. See, <laughs> in that song. Hey. Not for one nanosecond has the blood not been operative on you. Come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things. Not like Abel's blood when his brother killed him. God said the blood of your brother is crying out to me from the ground. Now the blood of Jesus speaks better things. The blood of Jesus is saying, 
Oh, hallelujah. Let all the heavens shout. This is my brother. This is my sister. Blood washed. Clean. Now are you clean through the word which I have spoken. Better things. Doesn't cry for vengeance against you. Doesn't cry for God to punish you in any way. Doesn't cry for God to put limitations on you so that you can soar for Jesus. Witness effectively, back the devil out of your affairs. The blood of Jesus Christ is what he pleads. Speaking blood. I hear the speaking blood. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise Father, the Lord. bless your beloved people. Cement in every heart the reality of what Jesus died to make each one of us to be. Help us in our productivity, in our fruit bearing, being fruit, fruit unto God. Father, we are not the barren fig tree. We are the ones that Jesus spoke about when he said, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Grant it, Lord. Grant it, Lord. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus' name.